Hi, so this is Marcy Stamper, and I'm here today with Janice Dickinson in the uh, K-Root Studios in Twisp, Washington. Appreciate Don Ashford's generosity of letting us record here. So it sounds like the participants in these workshops are, for the most part, coming with an open mind and they're, you know, they've already realized they want things to go differently. But I imagine that still in the course of our daily lives, occasionally you do have an interaction with someone who might say something that's really offensive or where they're they're actually trying to get a rise out of you. So does Braver Angels teach you any techniques for dealing with something like that so it doesn't yes. become contentious? And ironically, those types of conversations most frequently happen in families. You wouldn't think that that would be the case, would you, that you'd think would families would be the safest place for people, but often it's the most deadly. So we have a lot of um, participation in our family and politics workshops around the holidays time because people are going to be more with family than they have been. And we actually teach a set of skills for exiting a conversation, which is clearly not going to be healthy or useful. And people have different ways of doing that, so we give lots of ideas. One of the things is it's sometimes possible to use humor for some people, you know, making fun of yourself or doing something to change the conversation. It sometimes works. I, I will say it helps how you feel inside that you're not, if you feel yourself triggered by that, that's time to exit quickly. If you're not triggered but the other person is being just genuinely a jerk, um, <laughs> then... Um, we teach, you know, these strategies of humor or suggesting to the person that maybe this would be a conversation we could have at another time in a, in a better environment. Like, for instance, if this is a Thanksgiving table, you know, Uncle Joe, I'd, I'd like to talk to you about this more, but let's not do it here. Can we do it another time? Because we're at Thanksgiving dinner, and for me, that's not a time to talk about this, something like that. But you find a way either to completely exit. I mean, if you have to get up and leave if someone's attacking you, then... Obviously, that has to happen. But most times, it seems like if you're, if you're managing yourself and learning how to deal with not getting triggered by these other people's different views, then it's just maybe understanding that this isn't a good time to have this conversation. This person's not in a good place to have it. And what can I do to get out of it as quickly as possible with as little damage as possible? You know, Marcy, there's one thing that I haven't mentioned that w would be really useful, and that is that... Um, when we're teaching people to listen, we also teach them to understand that that doesn't mean that they agree with the other person. So I'm listening to someone and I'm, I'm trying to understand their position, but I don't have to change my position. Uh, and I don't have to agree with their position, but my intent is to have a relationship with the other person and bridge the political divide, not because we, we stopped believing our beliefs, but because we, we understand that we're both human and we agree to disagree, which is another useful way to end a conversation is agree to disagree. You know, Uncle Joe, can we just agree that we don't agree on this? And let's go back to the turkey, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. So it's really important because I think a lot of people think that if they listen to someone else, that means they agree. What we teach is that we're entering into conversations not to try to change the other person and that I don't have to change myself either. I can hold firmly on my beliefs that are core to who I am and still listen to someone else in a meaningful way. And do they encourage you to even ask more questions yeah. to understand better where that person's coming from? Yeah. We teach to look for experiences in people's lives, stories and experiences that have led them, like, for example, a good question is, so how did you get to this perspective? What, what you know, has happened in your life that's, that you think is behind why you believe what you believe? And then hearing a story, and it, it not only opens up the other person to um, a different place than they've been in when you're asking for a story from their life, but it helps you understand where that person is coming from. And that's been so useful to me. I've read uh, several books that were written by politicians or people from the other side of the divide from me. And once I read those, and I was out of my information silo, once I read those, I, I could say, oh, now I understand. It makes sense to me why they believe this. It doesn't mean that I agree, 
but I understand now how they got to that feeling. It really makes the whole situation less toxic because it's humanizing to, to understand that someone believes something because of their life experiences. Right. It makes sense that obviously depending on what's happened to you is going to influence the way you see things. And also so. where I'm getting my information. I think we also, we can try in a conversation to understand where that person's information is coming from. And probably it's from a different place than I'm getting my information. Okay. So if people wanted to get involved with Braver Angels, what are some of the things that you would recommend? Are there local events? Are there online things where they could listen to lectures or read or uh, sign up for some of these workshops? Yeah, the most immediate and simplest thing to do is to go to braverangels.org, O-R-G, and that website has just chocked full of workshops, debates, those kinds of things. But they also send out a weekly email, sometimes twice a week, with all the upcoming events. And it's very simple. You don't have to become a member to sign up. Becoming a member is $12 a year, and it helps support Braver Angels but you don't have to be a member to participate in workshops or, or uh, receive the newsletter. And then locally, our, our alliance is always working on new things, on workshops. Um, right now in our, in our area, everything is on Zoom, but that could change and hopefully will change. But a lot of the things on Zoom are fantastic, and they're really easy to get to. It takes a lot less time to attend something on a Zoom workshop, and they're well done. And we have a Western Washington Alliance and a Central Eastern Washington Alliance, of which I am one of the co-chairs. And we have a website um, that has all the upcoming events for our state, um, which is braverangelswa.org. Um, or you could just um, Google up Braver Angels Washington. And that website has more relevant things to our local area. Something that I'd like to share is my email address in case anyone would be interested in contacting me because I have my finger on the pulse of a lot of different levels. It's an easy email, winthropfitness at gmail.com. I'll just say that again, winthropfitness at gmail.com. If anyone would like to contact me, I would love the conversation. Thanks again for taking the time to share all this interesting information. I know I'm going to go on there and read some more things and listen to some more of the lectures. It just seems like they've got some really important insights for all of us. So, Thanks, Marcy, yeah. for your curiosity and great questions. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for your time.